and at the close. One sat alone beside the highway begging. His eyes were blind, the light he could not see. He clutched his old rags and shivered in the shadows. Then Jesus came and bade his darkness flee. When Jesus comes, the old tempter's power is broken. When Jesus comes, all the tears are dried away. For he takes the gloom and fills the light with glory. For all is changed when Jesus comes. To stay. So men today have found the Savior able. They could not conquer passion, lust, and sin. Their broken hearts had left them so sad and lonely. Then Jesus came and he dwelt himself within. For when Jesus comes, the tempter's power is broken. When Jesus comes, the tears are dried away. For he takes the gloom and fills the light with glory. For all is changed when Jesus comes to stay. Well, as many of you know, that's the song Brother Olaf opened the broadcast with many, many years. And with that introduction, Mrs. Cameron and I would like to share some sweet memories of Brother Olaf with you. Memories of a man that was unusual in our generation. Touched the lives of thousands and thousands of people. And thank God, uh, he being dead yet speaketh. And uh, Brother Olaf was an unusual preacher and uh, preached the old-time religion, uh, which we'll let him sing about in just a moment. But uh, first of all, we'd just like him to uh, introduce himself by the way of recording. And the old records are a little scratchy, but I know they'll be a blessing and encouragement to you. And the songs and uh, then some of the incidents and Brother Olaf was just a down-home preacher. He liked to use homey illustrations. And we'll have some of those about his boyhood days. And uh, one of the ones I like best is the marble story. Uh, way back uh, yonder when uh, young people, you know, could entertain themselves. And uh, instead of being in front of the television, uh, they played marbles and uh, a lot of different things. And we'll have that story along with many others. I know there will be an encouragement to you, but uh, here's Brother Olaf to share with us uh, about uh, <clears throat> the very beginning days when the Lord blessed him and uh, put his uh, majestic hand, as Brother Olaf said, on his country boy head. And some 36 years ago, the Lord placed his omnipotent hand on the shoulders of the most unworthy country boy and called him from his single old cultivator into the ministry of preaching the unsearchable riches of Christ Jesus. And surely he has led us safely along and been more than our heart ever had a right to expect the ministries. Over three dozen years ago, we took our little old milk cow, went off to Bailey University, and milked our way through school, sick in body, untrained in mind, and with very meager finances. Meager finances with fear and trembling, started into the greatest future that one could 
ever hope to have. At the cow shed, six o'clock each morning, was the time of prayer and discipline for my undisciplined life. And it was then that the Lord began to give us theme songs, some of which you'll be hearing on this album. This is the first theme song we ever had. Would you be a victor over every foe, conquer every trial in this old world below, overcome temptations that each day you meet, keep in touch with Jesus, he will keep you sweet. Many hearts are broken. Oft an aching breast waits the message spoken that will give it sweet rest. You perhaps can bring them joy and peace complete. Keep in touch with Jesus. He will keep you sweet. Would you be a blessing? All along the way, would you be possessing perfect love each day? Just let the Holy Spirit overcome defeat. Keep in touch with Jesus, he will keep you sweet. Keep in touch with Jesus, though the path be dim. Let no cloud nor shadow sever you from him. Joy or sorrow greet you, friend or foe you need. Keep in touch with Jesus, he will keep you sweet. And there were many things that happened during the Baylor days, but there came a time when there was a parting of the ways when uh, Baylor's stand on the Bible and other things took a liberal view and Brother Olaf took his stand. And, of course, uh, there came a time when he preached there and I think disturbed quite a few folks. But many things happened. And here's a little story that Brother Olaf tells during his Baylor days. I know it will be a blessing to you. During our stay in Baylor, uh, there was a very pitiful girl that came. Her name was Sunny. That's all of her own. Her name was Sunny. She came, and somebody was kind enough, though she was a drifter, and a lonely, uh, defeated girl. And so they, she came into Baylor, and President Pat M. Nell permitted her to go to school. She'd never been around Christians in her life. She highwayed in, just like a lot of the people. And back in those days, you didn't highway it. A girl never was found on the highway then. You could never drive. You may see a man or a boy, but you never saw a little girl stand on the highway or at the truck stop back in those days. And so Sonny came in, sort of an attractive blonde uh, girl, and she came in, and, and she decided she wanted to try to make something out of herself, she said. And I want to be around the right kind of people I never have in my life. I never had a home that I can remember. Just been on the drift. And so she got in. And I remember the two girls that met me at Max's Minority Prime Time every morning. That's Kitty Skinner and Ethel Vice. These two girls, they were always there. And uh, uh, they, they moved Sonny in to Kitty's room. They were roommates in Burleson Hall. And uh, so... They came and said, Brother Lord, pray for Sonny. Pray for Sonny. Oh, I tell you, just pray for Sonny. We're going to have to win her to Christ. She's not a Christian. And unless we can win her to Christ, and, and of course, Sonny, she'd never known anything but sin. I mean, just uh, uh, traveling down the street. Anybody want to take care of her and help her along a little bit. And, and for whatever price, it didn't make her any difference. And there came a day when... And she stepped aside, and President Neff called her in the office and said, I'm sorry, but you won't be able to stay on Baylor's campus. Your morals and your life 
are not good. We can't have a girl like you living in our dormitory. And um, she said, all right. And so she had a day or two. And uh, Kitty and Ethel, they said she's been expelled by the war. Pray that we, when have we got tonight? We've got tonight to win her to the Lord. And uh, the next morning, I went to the early morning prime meeting after I'd met my old cow and gone over to the prime meeting. And Kitty came bouncing in. And she was shouting and happy. And she said, oh, Sonny got saved last night. And even though she left this morning, she left uh, this poem on my desk. And she got it and read it and never forget it. Restless feet, never still, never stop, never will. Till the final journey's ended and the restless souls ascended home. Walked in darkness till today, no one near me. To show me the way. It's different now. I've seen the light. Christ is going to guide me through the night. Home. I don't know where she is, but I hope I'll meet her when I get home. But I know one thing. Kitty prayed with her that night and spent the night with her. And she trusted Christ, she said, as her own personal Savior. Well, in 1958, with four children, Miss Cameron and I sold our new home packed our clothes at our 49 Chevrolet, and went to college in Macon, Georgia. As we sought a church to attend, we met Dr. E.C. Sheehan, pastor of the Mikado Baptist Church in Macon, Georgia. And in 1959, Dr. Sheehan scheduled Evangelist Lester Roloff for a meeting. You know, honey, I had been listening to Brother Lester Roloff on the radio for about a year, and I was so amazed at this preacher. And when we heard Brother Roloff, preach and met him, we knew we found our crowd. Never dreaming one day would be a part of the ministry. Here's Brother Olaf with that old time religion. This song. Now everybody's talking about something you can hear as the world passes by. Some are talking about their wealth and their mansions. Others talk about the trouble and the strife. Now I don't know how to talk to a rich man. When compared, I'm a beggar, no doubt. But if you're talking about that old time religion, well, I know what you're talking about. I like to talk about the time that Jesus saved me when my poor soul was sinking down in sin. I like to talk about the times that he helped me Through the sunshine, the storm, and the rain I like to talk about the time of his coming When I see his sweet face, there's no doubt Now if you're talking about that old time religion Well, I know what you're talking about Now if you're talking about the old time religion well, I can tell you what you're talking about About the kind that would make you love your pastor When old Satan would say, kick him out About the kind that would comfort you in sorrow And would never, never fail to make you shout Now, if you're talking about that old-time religion Well, I know what you're talking about well, that meeting about 46 years ago began a long time of fellowship with Brother Olaf. And after graduation in 1963, the Lord allowed Miss Cameron and I, along with four families, to start a church in Jackson, Georgia. Shortly after we had organized the church, Brother Olaf purchased property in Culloden, Georgia, about 40 miles from the church. And I invited Brother Olaf to preach in our church and when Brother Olaf found out that I was an electrician, he asked me to help wire the buildings there in Culloden. And the men and women from this ministry, which at that time was the City of Refuge and the Jubilee Home combined, attended our church in Jackson. And it was those days when I would, uh, <coughs> pastoring that little church, would uh, play the records of Brother Olaf 
And one of my favorites was, My confidence in Jesus grows stronger every day. My confidence in Jesus grows stronger every day. His grace I find sufficient to keep me in life's way. When I am sad and lonely, He is a friend indeed. He gives me grace and comfort in every time of need. He loves me. He's living in my heart. He loves me. He never will depart. He loves me. He died for me on Calvary. And that is why I sing. He loves me. They sat at his feet and looked in his face, content in his presence to be. For no one before had cared for their souls like the strangers that by the sea. They came and they were blessed. He gave the weary rest. He made the blinded eyes to see. He fed the hungry soul and he made By the waters of blue Calvary. Well, in 1973, Brother Olaf asked Miss Cameron and I to come to Corpus Christi, Texas, and be on the staff of the Roloff Homes. Miss Cameron and I assumed the duties in the schools to begin with, and we had about 400 students. Mrs. Cameron became the principal of the Park Avenue. Park Avenue Day School, the oldest day school in Corpus, and the first one, by the way. And later on, Mrs. Cameron and I became superintendents of the Rebecca Home for Girls, which housed uh, about 160 girls most of the time. And for seven years, we traveled across the United States with Brother Olaf and learned how to live by faith. I think our uh, payday was about $300 uh, most of the time. But... Uh, one of the first songs Miss Cameron sang, along with the choir, was Living by Faith. And, of course, that became the theme song of the homes. And uh, we sang it almost every service uh, in the church. And Miss Cameron here is uh, singing the lead as the choir sings it. That we sing in every service. Living by faith, I care not to say what tomorrow may bring, its shadow or sunshine or rain. The Lord has no ruling for everything, and all of my worry and pain. Living by faith, living by faith, living by faith, living by
And there were many other songs that Brother Olaf requested. And uh, in fact, he requested Miss Cameron to sing them over and over on several occasions. And one of those songs was, uh, he was there all the time. Yes, it seemed like sometimes Brother uh, Roloff thought, well, Miss Cameron doesn't know but one song, and so I'm going to request it. But that was not true. He really liked this song especially. In fact, I sang it at his private funeral, uh, requested by Mrs. Roloff. And um, he would have us to sing it over and over and over. But it seemed like it was always a blessing. And uh, whatever... Uh, was a blessing to Brother Roloff, seemed to be a blessing to the people. And at this time, we're going to sing. He was there all the time. <laughs> Well, as you know, Brother Roloff loved to sing, and he loved to lead the choir. In fact, uh, he led the choir most of the time, and uh, he'd have people join in to sing with him many times. And how uh, we loved the singing, and that's what impressed the young people, was his sincerity in not only singing the songs, but telling the stories, many of his uh, boyhood experiences, 
and things had happened to him along the way in the ministry. But uh, his uh, jubilant singing was always a blessing. And uh, we'll have a choir song, and then we'll have some uh, down-home stories from Brother Roloff. Live for the pride we have driven After our labors are old Rescue our sons to be given From an eternal soul All of the soul is in the Lord There we shall rest, never to roam Free to walk in, happy and bright with Brother Olaf singing, he loved to use stories from his boyhood days to illustrate his sermons, and they always touched the heart and called for a decision, like this one about Jesse the old mule. He used to preach on the mark of a Christian, and one of them, of course, you know, is the bookmark, and, and the knee mark, and the water mark, and the birth mark, and all those marks, they're all important. But, you know, when I got around to the collar mark, I always thought about old Jesse or that old mule. I, I don't guess there'll be any mules in heaven, but if there is, he'll be there, I guarantee you. He taught three boys, Melvin, he dealt and Lester to plow. That old mule, I think he'd fly him all day and ride him to the house. He never kicked. And uh, always faithful. And, um, but, you know, my daddy, I'd be out there after the threshing or thrashing of the oats. Um, my daddy would say, now boys, we, we're going we're gonna to turn the, the oat fields under. And we'd go out there with the three mules and a little old plow, a little old turning, just a little bit, just go around and around and around. Now then you take a, a six or eight little tractor and be done and set at the drugstore by afternoon almost, you know. But uh, old Jesse, boy, that old mule, he put me to shame as a Christian, really. That old mule, my daddy'd come out there and I'd say, Dad, there's sure some ugly places coming on his shoulder. I mean, it, it's, it's getting raw, it's getting red. But old Jesse, you know, I can see him. He'd still pull. Boy, he'd twist a little bit. And he, he, but he never did balk. Not one time did old Jesse ever balk. My daddy said, son, I better run into town. I better run into town right quick, uh, and I'll be back before you hook him up again. He'd go into town and get one of those great big old orange pads, you know, uh, that would come around and come down over his shoulder. And my daddy would go and very gently and tenderly find out where the old sore was, you know. And he'd take that old pocket knife of his, you know, and he'd pull it out. And he'd cut a hole in the, in the, in the pad. And it, that hole would go right down over that big old store, you know. And that'd take the pressure off. Boy, I, I'd hook old Jesse up, you know. And, uh, boy, I tell you what, uh, when he started to pull, maybe the thing wasn't exactly over. I can see him twist just a little bit till he got uh, the old store right in the hole there. Boy, all afternoon. He never did look around and said, Lester, you realize this is mule abuse? Hmm? Huh? I file on you. <laughs> no, 
Ah, uh, listen. But wait a minute. What I'm trying to say is this. Old Jesse, you didn't, when, when he was 20 some odd years of age and rheumatism set in and so forth, you know, you didn't, you didn't go up to old Jesse and said, hey, have you ever pulled a plow? Have you ever pulled a load of cordwood out of the bottom over yonder and, and pin oak bottom and so heavy? Have you, have, oh, no, no, all you had to do is just walk up to it and old mule stand there, you know, uh, old, and, and, and rub your hands over his shoulder and count the knots where he'd been pulling. That's it. I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. I wonder how many of God's people are going to have any scars. I mean, real scars. Uh, Paul didn't have to have any ordination papers. They just counted the stripes on his back. He was ordained. Well, let's read on.